I need all the wins, yeah. yeah. Ain't no answer, gotta get a no call and quit. Yeah, gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah, better move out the way, cause I'm coming with hard and hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Success ain't no giving, some days I don't hit, I don't sleep When I'm focused on dying, just down, wonder when I'm anxious Ain't no limit till I tank, I'm running on fumes The hopper system don't amaze, the roads racing through the pavement Get your hands out of my bag, I know that's because I've been in it I don't need to brag, I guess that's what happens When you taking care of your business, what's a friend and you do the math I'm out of my pocket, Houston, we got a problem, man Perfect, let them watch me, elevating, got them noxious Cause I'm the pilot in the cockpit, no, it's diving in the option Woo, watch out, get a hit, watch out, get a hit, watch out, get a hit Woo, it's time! Welcome to DFS by the Numbers with your host, Brady. Better move, you might get knocked out. What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the numbers and welcome to Best Bet for UFC Atlantic City. We got Aaron Blanchfield going against Man on Fioro. Very good fight night card here. We are in front of a live crowd. I know a lot of people going to the card, so hopefully they, they enjoy it. I know the fans at home are going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. 14 fights on this card, so these guys will each get four passes. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to the car. Looking forward to the show. I'm here with 138 MMA. Johnny K picks, and we here with Luke. Uh, we'll start with 138. How are you looking forward to this card? Uh, kind of nervous, honestly. Uh, I don't have a lot of. I don't have um. I don't have the same take as a lot of people do on a lot of these picks. So that either means I'm on the right side, nobody else is wrong, or I'm way off on a couple of fights. So we're gonna we're gonna see how that plays out. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it's a good thing. We'll have to see. Looking Could forward be. to hearing your takes on these fights. We got Johnny back in the building. Johnny, are you looking forward to UFC Atlantic City? What's up, Brady? What's up, guys? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, got way too many bets. I'll tell you that. I did not expect uh, as many bets as I have. So that's always a little nervous as well. So, But there is a lot of spots that I like. So we'll see how everyone, uh, what they think too. So we'll, we'll go for it. There we go. And last but not least, we got Luke. Luke, are you looking forward to UFC Atlantic City? Yeah, dude. It should be a, should be a pretty fun card. Uh, I think 138 is currently in first right now. I'm lagging a little behind in second. I think it was that Jillian Robertson uh, prop. I think that got him, got him all the way up. So uh, hopefully uh, we can we can do some damage this week. I'm looking to catch up. There you go. Let's do it. Can't wait to see what you guys have for this card. Before we get into it, if you guys could please do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe here to the channel. We go live every fight day, two hours prior to the prelims. Another late start time. Like I'm not digging these late fight night uh, start times. Starting at seven, so the main event's going to end around like one thirty. Like I'm tired already, so this is not good. But I'll stay up and uh, I will enjoy the fights. Uh, let's shout out the chat before we get into the best bets. We got MMA Goulash, first one in the building. We got Dean C, Jovan, Victor De Jesus. We got Brandon Eldar, Benino, Mick D, Ace of Spade. Uh, we got Adam, Stevie, Jonathan, uh, Dennis, Il, Ilogik, 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 who is uh, in Atlantic City. He's hyped. There you go. We got Jason, Urban, Jonathan, Jong Lee. What is up, everybody? Please do me a favor and smash the like button. I say we get into it, though. And we're going to start with the first fight of the card. We got Colin Loughran going against Angel Pacheco. And there's been some uh, line movement here. Uh, Colin Loughran is now a minus 500 favorite, which makes him the biggest favorite on the card. Pacheco is a plus 375 underdog. So people liking them some Loughran. People are putting him in, in some parlays here. And this line's kind of getting blown out at this point. So first fight of the card. We'll start with you, Luke. What is your best bet here? Yes, I guess going against a, a tad bit of the grain, but I'm going to go with Lofren by points at plus 265. That's on Circa right now. Uh, obviously, the, the KO prop, I think, is sitting right around even right now, which seems like the most logical outcome for most people. Um, but I also know a lot of other people that are on the submission prop. It's definitely a dicey one. I just feel like Pacheco, brown belt and jiu-jitsu from some of the compromising grappling positions I've seen him put in, that he fights hands well. The guy obviously proved his toughness, you know, last time out uh, in the last outing. So I just feel like Lofren is competitive on the feet, 
probably even wins on the feet, but he's just going to have the wrestling grappling to grind the guy out, um, who is going to be a little bit bigger. But I think uh, homeboy Pacheco is going to be able to hang on at the end of the day, but Lofren is going to be the clear minute winner. So Lofren by points at plus 265 will be my bet. All right, Lofren, decision to kick it off, plus 265 for Luke. We'll go with 138. What are you liking for the first fight of the night? So this is the first fight where I'm going to be way off from everybody else. Um, so in real life, I found a way to play both sides. But for the sake of this show, obviously we can't do that. So I think the line's a little bit wide, and I'm going to go with the Pacheco money line and just hope he outdogs him. I mean, the dude threw like, and I think he landed almost 200 strikes, significant strikes, maybe uh, something like it was just a crap load of strikes in a loss on the contender series. And if he can throw that kind of volume against most people, he's going to win. So I'll take him. Pacheco money line. All right. Calling the big upset, the biggest dog on the card there, a Pacheco money line. And yeah, best price plus 375. Johnny. Uh, we got Luke on the decision for Lofren. We got 130 on the big upset. What are you liking for this first fight of the card? Yeah, I'm liking the overs in this fight, actually. I know both guys have a lot of finishes on their record, but I think both guys are super durable. And if Pacheco can take 200 strikes to from Danny Silva, I think he can take the strikes from Lofren. Now, is he going to be able to survive all the wrestling? That's a different story. But I still don't think he's going to like quit or anything. He's, gonna, he's a dog, I think, so... I like the overs. I'm just going to go with the over two and a half at plus. Uh, I see 120 over there on the right. Yep, 125. I'll, I'll take, even. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. All right. Uh, Lofren over two and a half plus 125 for Johnny. Uh, we got Keith saying, what's up, Brady? Let's get after these bookies. Let's go, fellas. Good luck. Good luck to you as well, Keith. We got Gamble Stein in the building. Uh, Lofren's going to sub Angel Pacheco. He's soft. Uh, Pacheco's a, a tough dude, but... It's an um, interesting match. I thought Lofren looked off in his last fight. Yeah, but he went against Taylor Lapless, who I think is very, very underrated. And then Elder saying Lofren is better. He will take a decision. We shall see. We shall see. And then Mick D like in the over 1.5 in a parlay. Um, yeah, it's, it's only actually like minus 160, minus 175. Not the worst parlay piece in the world. I think if there's a finish, it might come late. All right, uh, let's move on to the next fight. We have Jacob Malkoon going against Andre Petrowski. We got Jacob Malkoon minus 237, Petrowski plus 202. Malkoon, another decent sized favorite here. Johnny, we'll start with you. What is your best bet for this fight? So, yeah, this fight was a little bit tough for me to um, to pick. I kept going back and forth, but I'm going against my pick for the show. I'm going to say Petrowski gets it done inside the distance at plus 380. I think he's going to be live for a lot of front chokes, Andacondas, Darces, all the time like that. Um, Malkoon does go for single leg takedowns a lot, and sometimes he can leave his neck out there a little bit. So that's kind of what I'm banking on. But just in case, maybe if Petrowski gets on top of him and gets a, gr a ground and pound finish. But on the feet, I do like Malkoon. I think he's a little bit better. But on, on grappling, like I said, I think uh, Petrowski is more dangerous. So I'm going to try to see if I can uh, hit one here with a uh, Petrowski inside the distance at plus 380. All right. Yeah. I mean, if, if he's winning, it's probably finishing here, I think. So, yeah, this that's probably a good way to play it. If you are on the Petrosky side, uh, 138, what are you liking for this fight? So I know Malkoon doesn't typically finish fights, and he's been pretty bad at that, actually. But I think we might get – he's probably not knocking him cold. He's not knocking him dead. But I think Malkoon can get him just volume, get the ref to step in and just say, you know what, we're waving this off. So we're going to go with Malkoon TKO. I think it's plus 440 if I'm not mistaken. All right, Malkoon KO plus 440. And then Luke, what do you like over this fight? Yeah, so I'm going to go Malkoon late props 2-3. That's plus 451 aggregated on FanDuel. I just feel like Petrovsky is relatively front-loaded, I guess, like most people. I think he's definitely going to be dangerous early. Malkoon's definitely dropped early rounds, you know, got knocked out by uh, homeboy Phil Hawes back in the day, lost the first round to a uh, – uh, AJ Dobson, uh, definitely dangerous, definitely a good submission grappler, but we know that cardio is an issue. Malkoon's going to push despite not being like a crazy historic finisher. We saw obviously uh, Petrovsky get uh, ninja choked by battle back on tough. We saw uh, a Brazilian dude, Wellington Terman, threaten him with a bunch of front chokes. Gerald Mearshart got into mount in the third round. Um, so despite Malkoon not being the biggest historic finisher, I think if uh, 
Petrovsky's cardio does fail here, I think that's just going to give dominant position opportunities to Malkoon. So in a fight where people are steaming Malkoon money line based on a cardio dynamic, but then you're giving me plus 451 on aggregated two, three props, that doesn't, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I would rather, <laughs> I would rather take those late props than I would, you know, lay 70% indication personally. Yep, I mean, I can I can certainly see it. So Luke taking the Malkoon 2-3, uh, 138 taking the Malkoon KO, and then Johnny taking the Petrosky inside the distance at plus 380. Gus thinking a Malkoon decision. Yeah, I think that's probably the most likely path, but I think those late props are going to be live for sure. Um, Professor saying, I think Petrosky's live in a fight that is likely to go to decision. McD liking those late props as well. Yeah, they're, they're decent numbers also. And um, Australia stand up easy win for Malkoon. It could it could look easy. I think Malkoon's a really really good fighter. So, but I also think Petrovsky is really good as well. So it'd be a great win if he goes out there and uh, dominates him. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. We have Melissa Gatto going against Victoria Dudakova. We got Gatto sitting at minus one forty eight. Dudakova sitting at plus one twenty eight. Luke, we will start with you. What are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, this is, I guess, a little bit of a cop-out one for me. I'm going to be a little bit of a juice boy, but I'm just going to take the over two and a half rounds here. The only real finish potential I think I see is probably a Gatto sub, but I don't think either girl is particularly dangerous from a striking perspective. I still think both are generally competent defensive grapplers. Gatto will spend time on her back. Dudakova will spend time on her back, but... I don't know. I feel like this is just a bit of a dip for a traditional WMMA fight between two girls who I do think are generally tough and have good cardio. So give me the uh, over two and a half. All right. Over two and a half. Looks like best price, like minus 200 for that over. Um, 138, what are you liking for this fight here? So it's another one where I'm opposite of pretty much everybody else. Um, I'm going to go with the Dudakova decision. And I think the reason she's going to get the decision is simply because one fighter likes to be working from her back and one likes to be working from the top. I think we're going to get a decision. And typically I know they're favoring damage nowadays, but if the fight is on the mat, the fighter on top is typically winning. I've got it at plus 225. I'm not sure if that's yeah. still accurate. Yeah. I just looked at it, but yeah. Yep. Plus cool. 225. Yep. Um, and yeah, I, th I think you brought up a good point. Like um, she could definitely win a decision just by getting top control. God is content to kind of play off her back. So, I mean, I could, I can see it. Uh, Johnny, what are you liking for this fight here? Oh, well, I'm not really liking a whole lot, but I like to take a swing at least on one of these fights. And this is going to be the one I'm going to do Gato by KO at plus 800. I think she's going to be the stronger fighter here. Dudakova is moving up from straw weight to fly weight. So I'm thinking Gato might get some offensive wrestling going, which could put her on in the top position. And then she might get a ground and pound knockout, actually, or maybe even on the feet. Maybe she gets her catches her because I think she's going to be stronger on the feet, too. So I'm going to take a shot. Uh, Gato KO at uh, plus 800. All right. Gato KO plus 800 for Johnny. Uh, very liking Gato. Uh, tough uh, fight staying away like due to COVID decisions. Well, yeah, I think if she's winning, it's it's absolutely by decision. I don't think she's finishing Gato. Um, Gato sub plus 375 is generous. Yeah, I, I actually don't mind the sub. I think there will be some opportunities. Does anyone know if Dudakova is dating her coach? I'm not sure, but Dixon, you'd be the, the one to know that if, if so. <laughs> Especially if they have only fans. He knows. <laughs> yes. Eileen Dudakova also. Uh, Gato will take her down and sub her maybe in the second round. We shall see. We shall see. But yeah, Luke is taking the, the over. Uh, Johnny's taking the Gato KO. And then 138's taking the Dudakova by decision. All right, let's keep moving on. We have a fight that I'm really looking forward to. We got Ibo Aslan going against the Pleasure Man Anton Turkali. We got Aslan is minus 122. Turkali is plus 102. I think there's some interesting spots on this fight from a betting perspective. Uh, we'll start with you, 138. What are you liking for this fight here? I don't like this fight at all. I hate this fight. I wish it was canceled. I Whoa. hate that I had to make a pick on this fight wow. because I know that, so I'm I'm in my video I picked Turkali because I mean he won the first fight. It's like I don't I don't feel like either fighter is really like in should be in the UFC. So I'm going to pass on this one. But the fact that I had to make a pick sucks because I know someone's going to come back and be like, you're an idiot for picking Turkali. Yeah, I know. But I would have been an idiot the other way, too. They both shouldn't be here. So pass. 
you're not looking forward to the pleasure man very very interesting johnny <laughs> are you looking forward to being being pleasured this uh <laughs> well <laughs> i'll just leave it at that <laughs> but um for my uh best bet i'm gonna go with Azlan by uh knockout in rounds one or two on fanduel i think that's plus 135 um all of his wins have come in the first round i think there might have been one of them has been in the second but um I just think he finds that chin of Turkalau this time. Um, Turkalau's been taking a lot of damage in his recent fights. Uh, the Petrino fight, I know he didn't get knocked out, but he took a ton of damage. He got knocked out against Pedro, which isn't a great look. And Aslan can hit, and I think he's going to be able to catch him. I mean, probably first, but just in, I just want to be a little bit safer and say first or second um, at plus 135. Yep, I mean, that's a very, very viable outcome there, that first round. Aslan, you're getting the round two as well. Luke, uh, are you looking forward to this this fight as much as I am? Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping the uh, the the pleasure man can uh, apparently pleasure me or something. I guess that, that that's, <laughs> not gonna, that's not going to age poor. That's uh, that's yeah, that's not going to age poor. But uh, I'm I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with the pleasure man two three props aggregated plus four thirteen on a Fanduel. I think the general dynamic. I, I mean, it's it's a sloppy fight, kind of like one three eight touchdown. Um, it's not even so much necessarily about the first fight. Um, that's obviously a component, but like. I've seen other fights for Aslan where he's slowed down and where he's just like gotten mounted in like two seconds. Like it just doesn't really seem like the guy knows how to grapple and he's gotten tired in every single extended minimal fight I've seen him in. So obviously Turkali's a watch walking punching bag and he could definitely die uh, early here. But if he doesn't, I feel like Turkali's the better grappler and he has better cardio. So once again, you're giving me, the better grappler, better cardio who already won with, you know, you know, late in their first contest at sub 20% indication seems like a pretty easy, at least value based play for me. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I'm seeing. I think it's Oslan early Tricali late. Those Tricali props are in play. And then obviously Oslan, I think has a very good chance to knock him out in the first round. Uh, Oslan first round KO. Yep. I mean, it's definitely in play there. Um, but I'm on Oslan saying this line makes no sense. Almost a trap. I think it should be closer to a pick. I'm like, I don't I don't think you can trust either of these guys. Oslan all the way, very likely by KO. Justin, it can't side with uh, you know, the pleasure man. Yeah, he's 0-3 thus far in the UFC. Tricale's chin is gone. Oslan will KO him. Her, him early as last fight was not the best look. Oslan KO there. Uh, Dixon saying, Brady, this is my only fans fade parlay of the week. Oslan money line, Matthews money line, Nelson money line equals plus 1050. Yeah, I guess three fighters on this card have an only fans all male. Um, the, the pleasure man, of course, has an only fans. That's, that's a given. Uh, Dennis Bazuki has an only fans. That one kind of caught me off guard. And then also <laughs> Bill Algeo has an only fans, which, you know, it is what it is. So Dixon looking to fade the only fans. Um, let's see here. Mick D has the pleasure man by stoppage. I don't feel good about it. Uh, usually I like getting finished with pleasure. So I hope it, so I hope it happens. There you go. And then it didn't sing Oslan KO. Wish we got to see to more on the mic though. I mean, he's got to win and it's, uh, he's not doing a good job at that thus far, but, uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next fight. This is probably like my least favorite fight on the card. I think it's going to be fun. It's just I don't really know what to do with it. We got Dennis Bazookia going against Connor Matthews. It's about a pick. I'm Bazookia minus 115, Matthews minus 105. We'll start with you, Johnny. What are you doing for this fight here? I'm going to quote uh, Tyler in this one. I hate this fight. I'm passing on this one. I do not like it. I'm going as a pick just Bazooka, but I'm not confident at all in anything in this fight. Maybe the overs, but I don't even want to play it on this hypothetical unit bet. So pass all day. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm passing on it. Johnny, you have three passes left. Uh, 138, you have three passes left as well. Is there something that you like on this fight? Yeah, um, love it, actually. Uh, I'm going to go Matthews by submission. I think Matthews has a pretty good path here with the submission. Could be a club and sub. I don't think he just one shots him like Emmers did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh Matthews submission as my pick. And I think it's five plus five fifty. Yeah, Matthews by submission is um plus five fifty. Yeah, best price there. All right, Matthews by sub. Uh Luke, what do you like for this fight? Yeah, I guess kind of an unpopular opinion because I think everybody thinks this is going to go over and go the distance, but I, I'm kind of leaning to actually the fight finishing. So I'm going to go the fight doesn't go at plus 110. I just feel like it's going to be a pretty high action fight between two guys that are 
defensively void. You have Bazooka that also gives up bad grappling positions, but has also gotten into good grappling positions. You have Matthews, who's obviously a capable grappler that's gotten on top of a bunch of guys and subbed them. So um, I, I just feel like if this fight does go a full 15 minutes, it's going to be an absolute war where there's going to be finishing sequences. So it's like, I mean, how wrong, I guess, can you be at, at plus money here? So I, I'm just going to uh, go with general fight violence uh, on the fight doesn't go at plus 110. All right, Luke, Luke looking for some violence here. Plus 110 on the fight doesn't go. 138 also looking for some violence with that Matthews by submission at plus 550. And then Johnny using up his first pass on this fight. Uh, let's see what we got. Please let Bazookia win, says uh, Jonathan there. Um, make a like in the, the over 1.5 in a parlay, which it's, it's minus 325 chalky, but we'll see. We'll talk about that Weidman fight in a little bit. Oslin by, by KO. You need Verna to come through. Can't wait to talk about that Verna fight. Uh, yeah, uh, Johnny, he's disappointed. <laughs> you wasted your unit on the Bazookia. No, like the only fans fade. Yeah, Bazookia does have that only fans apparently. Um, and then Justin saying still got Bazookia though, and the professor liking Matthews at plus money. Uh, I don't think he's plus money anymore. Oh, you still can get him plus money on some books, but I will not be betting this fight personally. All right, let's keep moving on to the next fight. Very interesting fight here with some very interesting late line movement as well. We got Julio Arce going against Herbert Burns, and Julio Arce was all the way down to minus 600 for a little bit, and then he's currently at minus 350. Herbert Burns was as high as plus 425. The line has gotten crushed. It's currently sitting at plus 275. So people liking themselves some, some Herbert Burns there. Uh, we'll start with you, 138. What are you liking for this fight? So it's funny. You keep starting with me on the fights I'm passing on. I uh, I don't really like this one either because there's just too many unknowns. Neither guy's fought for like almost two years. So I don't really know what we're going to get from either of them. Uh, obviously, Burns is very skilled in the first round, and uh, Arce is pretty good at stopping the takedown. So, I don't know. Pass. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. You know what I thought was interesting was the weigh-ins. Like, for the weigh-ins, everybody was talking about, like, Chidi and, and Pacheco cutting down weight classes. And actually, Arce, that missed weight. You know, this guy is, you know, primarily a bantam weight, missed weight at featherweight. I thought that was really, really weird. Um, Luke, what are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, I mean, the original consensus was kind of like – are say two three but i mean those props are just like nerfed to, to, to like oblivion to where it's like there's absolutely no value on that at all um so despite that kind of being my pick that burns or i'm sorry uh are say probably survives early and finishes late i i think where the value on the fight lies though is burns sub one at plus 1200 which is at mgm right now uh, even if you go back to outside of like everything Burns has done in his career, but even if you go back to his fight with Bill Algio, he had Bill Algio in a super deep triangle that would have probably tapped most guys. Once again, Bill, Bill's a black belt, right? You know, Bill, Bill ain't easy to finish, but I mean, he was pretty close to subbing him here. So it's just like the guy's always going to go out there and maximize his equity. He's a high level black belt. And so, I think he can potentially put Julio Arce in some tricky spots here. So Burns sub one uh, at plus 1,200 will be what I'll give up. There you go. I thought you were going to pass for a second, then you're bringing it back <laughs> with the 12-1 the to 1 sub one. Yeah, I kind of think that's like his his money line there. Like I, I struggle to see him winning any other way besides sub one, and it's it's plus 1,200. So, yeah, very viable outcome there at, at a really good price tag. Johnny, what are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, I'm going to I'm on the same page with Luke here, but I'm just going to be a little bit safer. I'm going to take Burns either in round one or two, and that's at plus 600. Um, he, he does have like one or two wins in the second round, but most of them have come in the first. But there's just a lot of red flags, like everyone said here. Arce is moving up. He, he missed weight. Is he going to survive? Uh, Burns is skilled. Is, he, is cardio going to be better than last time? Is he going to give up in the second round? All this crap. But I mean but Burns is very talented in the first round. So that's kind of what I'm banking on here. I'm going against my pick, but um, just with here, I'm going to say Burns round one or two at plus 600. Yep. Makes sense. I mean, if he's winning, it, he's, he's winning early and he's a really good fighter early. You know, I was actually really impressed with what I saw from Burns, like in the first couple minutes of fight, that's just after that, where it gets kind of rough. Um, Burns is going to shock everyone. 
Uh, I love the burn sub one plus 1200 line. It really makes no sense to me. Yeah, I feel like that's a really big win condition for him. <laughs> Are people seriously betting Reese McKee at plus 120? We will talk about that fight there. Uh, Justin's saying, I don't want to touch this fight harder to call than uh, Matthews Bazookia for me. Red flag. Yeah, there, there are red flags. There's a clear red flags on both sides. Like, why is Arce missing weight at featherweight? And, you know, Burns, you have to worry about if this fight gets extended. What's he going to look like? Uh, hard to back Burns after he quit on himself. Yeah, but he's a massive dog, though. And his props are massive as well. So that, it, it's worth a little sprinkle, I think. Um, Burns gets burned. What's up, Brady? What is up, Fighter Fate? How you doing? Betting on Burns is is cray cray. Just a little sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle. Uh, let's see here. Okay. We'll move on to the next fight. We have Lupi Godinez going against Verna Jandaroba. We got Lupi Godinez minus 210. Verna Jandaroba plus 180. We'll start with you, Luke. What are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, this is another dicey one than where I was like do I use up one of my passes for this one or do I not? But uh, we're, we're, we're shooting for, we're shooting for the moon this week. We're, we're taking a lot of big stuff, but I'm going to go loopy aggregated two, three props at plus eight thirty five. That's on Circa right now. I just feel like Verna is about to turn 36 years old in two months. She's coming off of surgery on both of her knees. Mm. And traditionally when Verna is doing the best, it's traditionally within the first round. But if Lupi is stuffing her takedowns, which is obviously nullifying her best path to victory, Lupi is a much better boxer, which is a much more consistent pace who has pretty good pop in her hands. And so against a potentially aging not in the best current form, Verna Jandaroba. I think Loopy could put put it on her late. I mean, Mackenzie Dern put it on her late, who's not exactly Alex Pereira from a striking perspective, right? So I feel like if Loopy, you know, there's definite concern for Loopy here in the fight. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Verna's elite on the ground, but if Loopy can do what she needs to do, I think she does have the ability to put it on her late. So. We'll, we'll go with these uh, sneaky late props for Loopy at plus 835. All right, Godina is late. And, yeah, I, I just heard about the um, the Verna double knee surgeries last night. I was watching uh, Narco, shot to Narco, Lambo plays. Yeah, double knee surgery. So she's going to be showing up with those knee sleeves, and uh, we all know that knee sleeves are, are not plus EV. I mean, the last <laughs> time I remember somebody in those knee sleeves was – who was it? It was Kevin Lee. Oh, Kevin Lee. And he got sparked in the, in the first round. Uh, Roxanne Modafferi comes to mind. Not good. Not good. Those knee sleeves. Um, Johnny, what do you like for this fight here? I, I like Loopy to win this fight, but I'm just going to use a pass because I think her win condition is more than likely going to be by decision. So it doesn't really jump out at me for, you know, trying to make up some ground here. So I'm just going to pass on it. But actually, I do like Loopy in this fight. I, I think it's a good matchup for her. I think she can stop the takedowns. And I think she's got the if she does get taken down, I think her BJJ is OK. And she I think she can work her way back up. So on the feet, clearly it's night and day for Loopy. So um, but I'm just going to pass. All right. Uh, you have two passes left, Johnny. 138, what are you liking for this fight? So I would be worried more about the knees for Verna if it wasn't for my guy, Brandon Meyer, who just had his hip replaced and then goes out in BKFC and puts on the performance of his life. And, like, dude came off a hip replace a few months before that, like in November, and he just did this like a week ago. So, you know, shout out to my guy, Brandon. Won me some money at a plus 500 underdog. But because I can't go against – Rob Schneider's beautiful twin sister. <laughs> we are going with the money line on Birna Jandaroba. Loopy has sometimes just kind of not showed up. And like sometimes she does. And she's looked pretty good lately. But I could see this just being one of those cards where maybe she doesn't quite show up where she's supposed to be. Uh, doesn't put out the, the exact game plan you want her to do. And I think Verna is enough of a veteran. 19 and 3 or something like that is the record. Pretty solid. So I'm going to go with uh, Verna's money line. I think it's like plus 185 or plus 188, maybe something like that. Plus 185. Yes. Plus 185 for Verna money line. All right. So we got 130 on the Verna money line plus 185. Johnny passing and then Luke taking the Godinas to three plus 835. Bear saying uh, the Loopy fight IQ is not great. That is true. Uh, Verna can sub if Loopy wrestles. Uh, Verna sub, Loopy no jets. She has some jets. It's just, you know, Verna's submission game is, is very, very good. 
Um, let's see here. Come on, Dixon. Come on. Uh, Jana Rob is a lock. Absolutely not a lock, but you know, Loopy is probably a lock to make a couple mistakes in this fight. I'd say Loopy two three KO is is juicy. Loopy thirty twenty seven over Ral Rosas Jr. I can I can see that. Um, did you guys see that Colin is injured? I have him in a parley, and I'm terrified. I did not. Uh, where did you see that? Uh, Black. Black Why is money coming in on him like he's oh, not? That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Echo's hitting. Someone yeah, doesn't know. That's been that's been something that's been floating around this week that he's uh he's As coming it. in here a step down. So, jeez. Huh. Okay. The, the betting the betting action hasn't reflected that. Though. No, <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah, it is the opposite. Maybe they're I don't know, but that that is weird. I haven't heard that until just now. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, talking about the RC fight with the missed weight. Um, I mean, I don't factor it in too much. I just think it's like a weird situation. Like RC shouldn't be missing weight at featherweight. Is he's a bantam weight? Mm -hmm. Lately, right. people missing yeah. weight too. They've been having the advantage and actually winning. I mean, Danny Danny Silva just won, and he was what two pounds heavier, three something yeah. crazy. So that that that's just my personal philosophy, real quick. It, like if somebody misses by two or more pounds, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Honestly, it's it's, it's the people that miss by. A half a pound, yeah. a pound that are trying to kill themselves for that extra hour. I think that's when you should be concerned. But if someone's missing by two, three, four, five pounds, like that, in my opinion, that that's better for them. Just and didn't R say like gain weight when he <laughs> when he tried yeah. for the second attempt? So I think that like, was like a I think that was a scale thing though. They they, they were just yeah. fucking up. Like <laughs> Terrible. All right, uh, let's move on to we have the we have the feature prelim here in a very fun fight. We got Jamal Emmers going against Nate Landwehr. We got Jamal Emmers minus one seventy three, Nate Landwehr plus one forty eight. I'm really looking forward to this fight. Uh, Nate Landwehr always brings a fun and exciting fight. I see why they made it the feature prelim. We'll start with you, Johnny. What are you liking for this fight here? I'm liking this fight as a fan, but for the show, I am going to pass on it unfortunately because I just don't see anything again other than like the overs. And like, there's just really nothing. I think this fight does go to decision, but I just want to get a little bit more juice for the show. So I'm just going to pass, but I do like Emmers to win this fight. I just think he's a little bit more technical on the feet. And uh, I think he should win the minutes if he uses some wrestling too. So we'll see. But Nate, the train's awesome. I love him as a fighter too. So I'm just going to watch it as a fan, but passing. All right, Johnny, uh, you have one pass left for the entire show. Uh, Luke, you have used no passes. Are you passing on this fight or is it something you like? Do we have do we have to use all the passes? Yeah, you have to use all four. Oh shit! Okay, well yeah, then I, then then I'm passing this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right, Luke using up his first of four passes there. Uh, one thirty eight. What do you like for this fight? So I think a lot of people are down on uh, Nate Landwehr after his loss to Dan Ige, which I'm not really because. Dan Ige is a tough night for everybody, and he made it to decision with, with Ige, who is coming off some you know pretty big wins in his career. Um, as of late, Ige has been on a, a you know a couple of fight win streak. Also, before that, Landro was on a three fight win streak, and a couple of those wins were pretty good. Couple, well, one of them was kind of not that good, but either way, I think Nate the Train's getting a little discredited here, and I'm going to go with him on the money line. I'm seeing plus one fifty eight. Um, let me scroll back over. I think one fifty eight is the line. Um, but yeah, Nate the Train money line. Let's take it. All right, Landwehr money line minus one plus one fit plus one fifty eight there for one thirty eight, and then everybody else is passing. So yeah, Luke, you still have three passes. Uh, Johnny, you have one pass, and then uh, one thirty eight, you have two passes left. All right, what we'll do now is we're going to go and do a quick recap of the uh, the prelim bets between these guys. We'll start with one thirty eight. He's taking Angel Pacheco money line to kick off the card. Plus 375, Malcolm KO, plus 440 due to COVID decision, plus 225, passing on the Oslan fight, taking Matthew Sub, plus 550, passing on the RSA fight, and then taking Verna money line, plus 185, and then Landwehr money line, plus 158. Uh, Johnny is taking Lofren over two and a half rounds, plus 125, Petrosky inside the distance, plus 380, Gato KO, plus 800, Oslan KO, 1 2, uh, plus 135, passing on the Bazookia fight. Uh, taking Burns 1 2 plus 600, passing on both the Godinas and Emmer's fight. And then Luke has taken Lofren decision plus 265, Malkoon 2 3 uh, plus 420 or 451, Gato over two and a half rounds minus 200, Turkali 2 3 uh, plus 4, 
413. Bazookia fight doesn't go plus 110. Burns sub at plus 1200. Uh, sub one that is, and then Godinez 2 3 plus 835. And then passing on the Emmers fight. So that's what we got thus far for the prelims. Uh, Nate is live, but got to do, I uh, got to go Emmers skill wise. Yeah, I think Nate's for sure live in this fight. I think Lambert should be a small fave here. Emmers is good. Uh, got better skills. He can finish them. He's tough to finish, but um, we shall see. I hope Nate gets it done uh, with a melting finish. Yeah, could, could maybe see it. Laneware is really underrated right now. Uh, miss, miss that pick, in my opinion. Four passes, much too max. Four passes, too much, too max. Too we much. have to. I mean, we only do 10 bets on the entire show. So if we have a card with 11 fights, um, we only pass on one, but we have to pass on four, unfortunately. I'm sorry, uh, blacked. Black Dem. Anyone else betting on the pleasure man? Uh, maybe the maybe the two three props. That's about it. Let's see here. All right, so let's let's keep moving on. Before we do, so if you guys have not already, be sure to like the video. Let's try to get those likes up and also subscribe to the channel. We'll be, we'll be back next week for best bet for UFC Vegas ninety with uh, Brendan Allen, Chris Curtis, and then two weeks from now. We have UFC 300, a fight that I know we're all very much looking forward to. But I'm also looking forward to this main card opener between Chidi and Jaquani going against Reese McKee. Uh, yeah, Chidi and Jaquani, he opened up minus 175, went to minus 225, was there for a while, currently minus 142. Reese McKee was hanging around plus 190 for a while, um, but it's been money coming in on Reese McKee throughout the week. And I think a big talking point on this fight was the weigh-ins. Like, how the heck is Chidi going to make Walter Wade? Uh, well, he did, and he looked good doing it. So, um, very interesting there. We'll start with you, Johnny. What are you liking for this main card opener? Yeah, I think this fight will be, you know, it depends on what happens early. And then if it doesn't happen, um, it's probably going to go the other way. So, I'm just going to go with Chidi to get it done early. Uh, KO rounds one or two. And that's on FanDuel. And that's plus 145. I think he's the better striker. I think he's got, he's very dangerous early, especially in round one. We have seen him kind of fall off a cliff after that. But um, Reese is, you know, he's tough and durable, but he's just super hittable for me. And that's why I didn't pick him. But if this fight does extend into, you know, over a round and a half, I think he's going to be live. So it might be a good live betting spot for Reese. But um, give me the Chitty KO props one or two. And that's at plus 145. Plus one. 45 uh, 138 what are you liking for the main card opener uh so in this fight i think it's one where you kind of have to play both sides for it to make sense because like everybody else said it's either cheaty early mckee late but since we're only making one bet on the fight i'm just gonna pass we're passing it all right passing on the and jaquani and uh reese mckee fight there so yeah you have one pass left and then uh, luke what do you like for this fight yeah, I mean, everybody knows that Chidi's the better fighter. He's more skilled, but I'm kind of going with the general dynamic of <laughs> what I've done pretty much on the entire show. Late props aggregated 2-3 for McKee plus 3.54. That's on Circa. Um, I just feel like if he can survive early here, he just has the zombie-like cardio type nature to break a guy down like McKee personally. So it's one of one of these weird ones. I like, I hate, I hate sitting there throwing something out on a guy who I think is clearly not the better fighter in the fight, but I feel like the dynamic at the price just, just makes a lot of sense. Couple with, you know, the general line movement of this now dropping, you know, 50, 60 cents. So I, I do think McKee's live, but I mean, if Chitty goes out there and, 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 you know, coffins the kid in, a minute and a half, I'd, I I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I mean that's kind of I'm seeing it playing out. Like Chidi, I think is very alive to finish him early. But if not, you know we've seen Chidi finished eight times in his career. Um, you said that it was uh, plus three fifty four between those two, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. There we go. All right, uh, Chidi, uh, Chidi, bang bang, Chidi under two and a half. Yeah, I think two, under two and a half could be a, a solid parlay piece there. McKee is live. Yes, he has to survive an early storm, but he is live nonetheless. Oh, uh, let's see here. McKee for a zombie mode. Yeah, he's he, he gets into zombie mode in pretty much every single fight. He did he did make weight, which surprised a lot of people, and he looked solid doing it. Cheaty round one KO, and then Reese two three super square, but it feels right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a solid way to play it for sure. 
Um, Reese is one of the worst UFC fighters of all time. Stop throwing your money away. But uh, Chidi has a lot of quit in him is the thing. Like if Reese can survive an early storm, he's, he's going to win. It's just he's got to survive that that early storm. I'm personally picking Chidi to, to knock him out early. But if it gets extended, I have some serious concerns. Even a ja even a gas cheaty is better than McKee. People trying to convince me this guy is secretly some great fighter. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about you know that toughness, um, that durability, that that heart McKee the has. Will. He has some some good attributes. You know, maybe not the best fighter, maybe very hittable. But uh, like I said, we've seen cheaty broken before. Cheaty by KO. That's what I'm picking. KO one I think is my my prediction there. Uh, what's up, Brady? What is up, LJ? We have uh, Irv A with the two dollar donut. Appreciate you, Irv. He says Emmers and Bazookia less on fantasy score on prize picks, letting people know. I actually like both those as well. So yeah, shout out to Irv for mm -hmm. for giving that out to the people. Appreciate you, Irv, for the dono. Um, fight doesn't go decision minus five hundred pass. It could be a parlay piece, chalky, but I think it's probably parlayable. I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked if this fight went the fifteen minutes. All right, let's keep moving on to the next fight. We got Bill Algio going against Kyle Nelson. I know Dixon in the chat's typing something up right now. Algio has an OnlyFans, uh, so looking to fade him there is, is Dixon. But are you guys looking to fade uh, Bill Algio? We'll start with you, 138. What do you like for this fight? So I actually like Algio round three uh, quite a bit. So we're going to do Algio round three plus 1,100. No method specifically. Could be a TKO, could be a submission. I think Algio is just going to be able to put too much of a pace on Kyle Nelson. And I don't think Kyle Nelson, I know he's looked good lately, but I think it's because he's been able to sucker guys into playing his game. And I don't think Algio is going to fall for that. I think Algio is going to put it on him. So Algio round three. I like it. I'm on it as well. So I I, I like it especially. Uh, Johnny, what are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, I like Algio a lot. He's one of my more confident picks of the card. So I'm just going to go Algio by decision though. I think Kyle Nelson is tough. He's durable. Um, but it wouldn't shock me if, you know, there is a round three to um, finish for Algeo, though. But just for the show, I'm just going to, it's at plus 120 for a uh, decision for Algeo. All right. Algeo decision 130 on the round three. Uh, Luke, what are you liking for this fight? So I'm actually going to combine both of those guys' ones together. And I'm going to give out the round three decision prop on FanDuel at minus one. 15. I think both guys made up uh made a lot of good points there. I think Algio's gonna work them. Uh we know Kyle Nelson can get tired in the third round. So I want that round three, round three is a buffer, but I do think he's gonna win the minute. So give me that round three decision at minus one fifty. Yep, I have that exact same play. Uh round three decision. Then I also did sprinkle that that round three as well, hoping to to come through and cash them both potentially. Uh so it looks like we're all four on the same page um got bill by decision yeah i think that's probably the most likely outcome but i would love to see him break kyle nelson and finish him late i think his only fans is just to teach technique i mean uh dixon what 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 is what is bill algio doing on the only fans i know you're you're an expert at this uh lawfren algio is safe two leg yeah i like both the win but lawfren is uh, getting too big of a favorite at this point i think he's like minus, minus 535 now on and apparently he's uh, people are thinking <laughs> but he's hurt he might be injured. yeah i don't know we got Urban saying, I talked to Kyle Nelson today. He said he's feeling amazing at things. Um, actually, his last fight, it thinks it actually his last fight on his contract, and he just had a baby, so he might be focused and, and go hard. I hope he does go hard. You know, his last four fights he hasn't, so I'm hoping he does and pushes a little bit of a pace. Algy has not posted on his OnlyFans, but neither had Billy Q. Fair, fair point. Huh. Algy has got this. The curse, the curse is real. I hope not. At least for this fight, I hope not. Yeah. This could be the one exception. What what I need to know from Dixon do, do, does he have like a model like is he tracking the the OnlyFans thing like I, I need to know what this like he might have is. an Excel sheet. <laughs> I think he just has memberships <laughs> or memberships. to all of them. Yes. <laughs> there you go. I mean, he might, he might. He might. That's awesome. I'm shocked how he knows all this, but he, he does. And then shout out to him. It, it's good information to have. Very good. All right, next we'll move on to the people's main event. Um, it's like the Twitter Civil War of the Week, which I was not expecting at all, um, but it is. We got Nursultan Ruzaboev going against Enriquez Dumas. We got Ruzaboev minus 205. SD Dumas is uh, plus 175. We'll kick it to you, Luke. What are you liking for this fight? Uh, you have the guy in Ruzaboev who hasn't been out of the first round in four years versus a guy who pistol whips women. Um, <laughs> massive pass for me. 
There we go. Yeah, I think um, this might be the first fight in UFC history where somebody's going to be wearing like an ankle monitor into the cage um, in SD DeMoss. But yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. 138, what do you like for this fight? Okay, so I don't really like a ton, but I'm going to, but I haven't, I can't pass on it because I have another one that I want to pass on. So we're going to have to make a pick and I'm going to go with Ruzi Boya submission at, I'm seeing a plus 190, but I don't, Everything else seems like lower than that by like quite a bit. So that might be a sketchy line. I'm not sure. Uh, um, otherwise, like plus 150 is up there. I'll take whatever one. I just can't trust a guy in Dumas who was just arrested and in jail in February and then had court just in March. So this month and like clearly he's probably not getting all of the, uh, you know, all the training, all the good looks that he wants in and out of jail, in and out of the courtroom. I, Yeah, I got to go through Zaboyev and I think subs is best bet. Yeah, it actually is plus 190, believe it or not. Mm. Brett Rivers hanging a very, very nice line there um, on that Rivers sports book. All right. Uh, so we got the sub for Ruzi Boev. Luke is, is passing. And then, Johnny, what do you like for this fight here? Yeah, I was going to do Ruzi Boev, Boev um, round one or two sub, and that's at plus 200. But now seeing that plus 190, you might as well just take that just in case if this fight does get to round three because, I mean, Dumas is pretty much trying to stay alive in round three. So... Um, I don't think it does go to round three, but it's not really that much of a difference. So I'll just take the sub prop two at 190. And um, he's got like 20 subs in, I think, either first or second round. I think, yeah. So 20 subs in the first or second round for him. So um, I'm just going to go with that. I think he's going to be able to find that neck eventually. All right. So two guys taking the sub. Yeah, that plus 190 is, is kind of sticking out. I don't really want to bet this fight, though, to be honest. I'm kind of with Luke in terms of, Kind of staying far away. Um, lots of sketchy, sketchy situations on both sides. All right, I gotta be careful reading some of these these comments. Um, I might not even read any. Like, <laughs> gotta be careful here. Oh, let's see. Um, is there anything that I'm Rizaboa by Smash? I hope so. I hope so. Um, well, Dumas is definitely getting better, but I still pick Nur Sultan by sub. And yeah, somebody said that we're picking. Well, I'm nobody. I don't think anybody's picking Dumas based off of criminal history. It's just, have you watched any of his fights in the UFC? If they looked, they've looked pretty terrible. But even in like fans, he's looked bad. Yeah, I mean, there's um, there's red flags on both sides, though. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next fight. We have Da, da, da. there we go yeah bruno silva going against chris weidman some more uh interesting line movement bruno silva got as low as minus 300 he's currently minus 191 and chris weidman got as high as a plus 250 he's currently plus 166 late money pouring in on 39 year old chris weidman looking forward to this fight we'll start with you 138 what are you liking for this fight here yeah so uh i don't believe that fairy tales are real and life just generally isn't as happy go lucky as people want it to be. So I don't think Weidman's going to win, but with that said, the best path to victory for Silva isn't a good enough number for a show like this. So I'm going to pass on this fight, but I do think he probably gets knocked out by Silva. I could be wrong, but I it's most likely. Yeah. I think it's the most likely path as well. It's just, I don't think the prices are that intriguing on the Silva side. Exactly so yeah. Yeah, uh, so 138, that is your last, last pass. So you'll have two bets on the last two fights. So Johnny, looks like you have one pass as well uh, remaining. Are you going to use that pass, or is there something you like here from a betting perspective? Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that pass as well. I agree with you, Tyler. Uh, fairy tales do not come true. I, do, I think there's going to be a knockout, but I just don't want to take the price for this one. And I think Weidman's path to victory here would probably get like a club and sub here, and that's a lot of um, Silva's losses by submission are club and subs. So... Um, I just don't think Weidman, or Weidman's going to be able to wrestle him for three rounds and get it. And I think eventually, you know, Weidman's been knocked out six times in his career. Bruno can hit like a truck. He's got 20 knockouts in his career. So I think it's eventually going to happen. So I'm just going to pass, but that's it. All right. Two passes here. Luke, you have two passes left. Are you using up one of those two or is there something you like here? Uh, I'm actually going to take one here. Uh, I'm going to go last one, Juice Boy. I'm just going to go with the alternate under two and a half, minus 200 here. I think I think someone's getting served at the end of the day. I, I think it's in all likelihood Weidman, but Bruno Silva submitted in seven of his 10 losses. Weidman 
old or not, probably the best wrestler grappler combined archetype that the dudes fought. Uh, gives up bad positions. I wouldn't be shocked if Weidman smashed him, <laughs> honestly, from top position based on some of the things we've seen in the past. But uh, so, yeah, I'm not I'm not really trying to pick a side here. Uh, I think someone's getting served. So give me that alt under uh, juice by two and a half at minus 200. Yep. I like it. I think somebody's probably getting served as well. It just comes down to, to who will be the one getting served. Uh, Silva KO. Weidman KO prop is using a lot of people on the on the sub. Um, well, Bruno Silva finish a man with no legs. Brad Tavares was not able to, but I think uh, you know Bruno Silva certainly is is capable of doing so. Silva should win, but this is the UFC game. Chris Weidman is sixty seven years old is still competing. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's only he's only thirty nine. So the KO for Bruno Silva opened up at minus one seventy five on Bet Online. It's now uh, minus one ten on Bovada. Yeah, money's came in on um, Chris Weidman all week. Let's see here. Weidman inside the distance, plus 410. KO plus 1300. Sub plus 650. I bet them all as a hedge. Weidman, the, the 185 Ferguson. I don't think we're getting to that point um, quite yet. But this this might actually be his last fight. We'll see. A lot of people think think so. Yeah. All right. And uh, Silva hits pretty hard, and Chris has no chin. Do the math. Yeah, I think uh, a KO1 for Silva is the most likely outcome. But if, if Weidman gets him down, like it's going to get very interesting. All right. Let's keep moving on. We got the co-main event here. We have uh, Vicente Luque going against Joaquin Buckley. Uh, we'll start with you, Luke. I think you have to have to pass here. But any thoughts on the fight? Uh, I think it's a tough one. I think this is uh, one of the main Twitter, you know, civil wars of the week. Uh, obviously, a bunch of money came in on Buckley. I think at the earlier prices, it was probably correct, but. Ah, man, it, it's a tough fight to call. This is this is one I'm honestly just looking forward to uh, to watching. Um, so yeah. Yep. I mean, I I'm right there with you, uh, Johnny. What do you like for this co-main event? Yeah, this is my weirdly confident pick of the week, and that's Luke. And I'm gonna do the submission or decision prop, and that's on FanDuel at plus two ten. He's got crazy Darce chokes. I think he can maybe get a club and sub here, or if this fight does go all three rounds, I think he's the fighter that's going to be winning by decision. I think Buckley's path to victory is probably going to be by knockout and more than likely early. But um, the overs you can look at too, the over one and a half, I kind of like that as in the play too. But I think Luke fought the better guys. I think he's more technical on the feet too. And um, I mean, like every buckley is super dangerous and powerful and this and that but he's very lo looping strikes and all that stuff so i mean he can catch him but i think luke is going to win this one one way or, or another so give me the submission or decision prop at plus 210 all right sub decision double chance plus 210 for johnny uh 138 what do you like him for this co-main event so i'm glad johnny is on luke a. that makes me feel a little better because it seems like everybody this week is on mm -hmm. Buckley. And this was another one where I'm like, what is everybody seeing? Because Luke is the far better fighter. Now I understand the brain injury. I get it. Um, but he went out in his last fight and although it wasn't a, a typical Luke fight, he still got the win and he did it impressively. He was a clear win. It wasn't like he, you know, edged out a really close fight. I'm going to take Luke a decision in this one, because I do think there might still be that, little bit of him trying to avoid getting just clubbed in the face by a, a guy that hits hard. So I'll take Luke a decision. I'm seeing plus 500. I don't know if it's still there, but wow, played a little bit ago. So plus 500. Wow. Real, real, real quick too, Brady. Obviously I know I don't have, you know, any, anything left on the fight, but I do think DraftKings has plus 600 on the fight to go to split. I think that's an interesting line. And so yeah. despite me saying that I think early money, like early, early money on Buckley was right, I do think where the price is right now, I actually did pick Luke K myself. I do think Luke K is the side, but just wanted to throw that out there. Plus 600 fight goes to split, uh, I think is an interesting little pop. Uh, I like it. I can see it. I can Usually see it. they're only like 400 though too, so. Yeah. M money's coming in on, on anti-violence though here on the overs mm -hmm. like you guys can see. So I think I think that's interesting. Yeah, agreed. I, I could see it. Uh, Buckley's off. Oh, come on. He's not. He's not awful. Um, I got Buckley until Luke shows me he isn't shot. That lesson could come tonight. I'm not super confident. Luke is definitely the better shot. fighter. Agreed. Agreed. Anybody picking Buckley as a Dumas? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. 
Luke doesn't move his head. He, he's never moved his head though his entire career. Um, Luke for skill. Buckwheat is a live hedge. Buckley once said that he could beat Prime OS GSP. No, he did not say that. He did not say that. Come on. You almost said OSP. I know. I almost said <laughs> I got OSP stuck in my head from that uh, Kennedy performance. Still. <laughs> He I looked like no. GSP in that performance. So yeah, he might, might well be. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. turning turning back the clock. Oh, I shot the OSP getting it done. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, next, we have the main event. We have 850 of you watching in here between Twitter and YouTube. If you guys can smash the like button, do appreciate it. Go follow these guys as well. Go follow all their stuff. Um, it is all linked down in the description. But yeah, looking forward to this main event. We got Aaron Blanchfield going against Manon Fioro. We got Aaron Blanchfield minus 179, Man on Fiora plus 154. Uh, we saw the weigh-ins. Man on Fiora looked rough. I think she was either the first or second fighter to this guy. Maybe the maybe the first even. She looked rough. Um, but I was kind of surprised to see how much bigger Fiora was than Blanchfield. It's a tough fight for me at least, but I'm curious to hear your guys' takes on this one. We'll start with you, Luke. I know you have to pass on this fight, but what are your overall thoughts on it? Yeah, dude. This this was just a really tough one for me. I'm someone that leans to the Blanchfield side in the sense that I think the grappling disparity in all likelihood is probably larger than the ground disparity, or I'm sorry, the, than, than the striking disparity, but like Blanchfield's just one of those weird chicks that just doesn't like fuck off for lack of a better term. Like she's just going to like keep pushing. Like she's not the most athletic in the world, but when I mean, we saw it against like Tyler Santos, like she just, got busted up early, but just like didn't stop, didn't stop. So I'm just like, th there are so many different like questions about individual sequences I have on the fight, which is why I just think it's like a great fight to live bet personally. Um, but I completely understand where people are going on both sides of it. I lean to Blanche finding positions and getting her out of there. I think Blanche by a, uh, KO TKO ground and pound plus 800, not too bad of a little bit of a nibble. Um, but I think the, the, the Fioro money is completely understandable because there, there is a realistic chance that she shuts home girl out and, and, and boxes her up uh, at the same time too. So God, God bless anybody who, who has, who has a, a shilling on this fight. Uh, it's a big pass for me, but I think there's definite value arguments both ways, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, uh, well, well said there. Uh, Johnny, what do you like for this main event? Yeah, so I do think this fight's closer to a pick -em. And then I saw that line movement earlier in the week, and I had to jump on it a little bit. But I'm going to actually just take Faro money line um, for the bet show here at plus one. I think it's 160 right now or so, maybe 170. I don't know where it's at, somewhere around there. But um, yeah, I, I just really... I. I see Blanchfield winning the way that she would probably will, which is getting her down to the mat and grappling her. But I mean, is she going to be able to, that's the problem. I mean, she was 0 for 14 against Talia Santos, uh, man and Perot, very big as you saw on the face off. And she's very strong. She does. She's a better striker than Talia Santos as well. So there's a lot of, um, things that I want to see during this fight, but at that price at plus plus one seventy, I think it's just a little bit crazy. And I do think it's closer to a pick them like closer to a 50, 50 fight. So I'll just take the value here. I'm not a value boy at all, but at this point when there's a huge line movement like that, when I do think it's a 50, 50 fight, give me a Faro money line. I think she can get this one done and at least win three rounds. I mean, the early ones more than likely, but we'll see what happens in rounds four and five. That's where it's a little questionable. So we'll see. All right, Fiora money line for Johnny, 138. What are you liking for this fight? Yeah, so um, obviously the money line's gone now, but I do think Blanchfield is the better, the better side to be on, if you, especially if you got in early. I'm going to take her inside the distance at, I believe, plus 150. I think that's the, uh, the way to go at this point, especially for a show like this where we're trying to get plus money anyway. You don't want to be going out here, you know, handing out minus 200s or whatever. So I'll take Blanchfield, ITD, plus 150. That's still good. All right. Blanchfield inside the distance plus 150. Shout out to Kiwi for the $20 done. He says, I'm not too sure if it was OSP winding back the clock or Kennedy just being completely overrated. Maybe a little bit of, but and I think, it, I think it actually does have to do more with Kennedy just not showing up. I'm not sure what Kennedy was really doing in that fight. Any thoughts on that guys? Like what, what do you think it was? Terrible fight IQ. He didn't I mean, show up at all. Kennedy has done that before where he doesn't show up. I usually yeah. try to fade the guy, but like I figured he'd be able to get it done over OSP who hasn't looked good in a few years. So 
but usually I pick against, like I pick picked against uh, Kennedy um, in the Jacoby fight as well, and I actually think I had Jacoby by knockout, which. I think the Kennedy problems are just up here, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so like it's hard, I mean, it's hard I, to I, even I, pick him anymore. I, I hate to be like the hindsight guy, but it's like if you've watched Kennedy from cradle to grave in the UFC, and you were someone that had a minus five, minus six hundred, minus seven hundred tickets, like it's <laughs> the guy's gotten hurt in like four different fights, loses the first round, doesn't throw strikes, needs his coach to like yell at him to do things like. At 205 pounds, which is a variable weight class, is just like, eh, yeah. there you go. I mean, I, th- I think the guy's incredibly talented, but it's like. I think Kennedy's yeah. also kind of afraid to get hit because he knows he's been chinned a lot of times. So it causes him to kind of freeze up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a guy yeah. that's just not the sum of his parts. in my Kiwi had a oh. OSP by decision. That had to be like something ridiculous because I was not expecting that. I kind of thought of OSP when it might be him clocking him early, but. All right. Uh, enough about that uh, terrible performance from Kennedy. Let's let's talk some bets here. Uh, going to go one by one, and we're going to make sure everything's correct here, and then we're going to give our best bet for the entire show. Um, if you hit the best bet, your profit's going to double. So say, for example, uh, 138's best bet is Algae around three plus 1,100. Uh, that'll double to 22 units. So 138 is kicking off the night with the biggest underdog on the card, Angel Pacheco, money line plus 375, Malcoon KO, plus 440, due to COVID decision, plus 225, passing on the Oslan fight, taking Matthew Sub, plus 550, passing on the Arce fight, Verna Jandaroba, money line, plus 185, Lambert, money line, plus 158, passing on the Chidi fight, Algae around three, plus 1100, Riz above Sub, plus 190, passing on the Silva fight, taking Luke a decision, plus 500, then Blanchfield inside the distance, plus 150, 138. Is all that correct? And if so, what is your best bet for the entire card? Yeah, looks good. Uh, for the best bet, I'm going to go with the Matthews sub line at plus 550 as my best bet. I feel weirdly good about it, like to, to steal one from Johnny K there. Weirdly the weird confident. Thing. I love it. All right, yeah, to win 11 units there for the for the Matthews sub for 130, his best bet. Johnny, you are taking the law friend over two and a half rounds, plus 125. You're taking Petrovsky inside the distance, plus 380. Gatto KO, plus 800. Oslan KO, one, two, plus 135. Passing on the Bazookia fight, you're taking um, Burns, one, two, plus 600. Passing on both the Gatinas and Emmers fights. And Jaquani, KO 1-2, plus 145. Algeo decision, plus 120. Riz above sub, plus 190. Passing on the Silva fight. You're taking Luke a double chance, sub decision, plus 210. And Fiora money line, plus 165. Is all that correct? And if so, what is your best bet for UFC Atlantic City? Yeah, that's all correct. And I'm going to go with my weirdly confident pick of the week, and that's Luke a sub decision at plus 210. I just, I just think he gets it done. Probably by um, decision, I would say, but I like that sub prop just in case. All right, to win 4.2 units, Johnny K's best bet is that Luke a double chance. All right, and then last but not least, we got Luke taking the law for decision, plus 265, Malkoon round two, round three, plus 451, Gato over two and a half rounds, minus 200, Tricali round two, round three, plus 413, Bazookia fight doesn't go to the decision, plus 110, uh, we got Burns sub one, plus 1200, Godinez round two, round three, plus 835, passing on the Emmers fight, McKee two, three, plus 354, Algie around three decision, minus 115, Passing on the Rizaboa fight, he's taking Silva under two and a half rounds, minus 200, and then passing on the co-main and the main. Luke, does all that look correct? And if so, what is your best bet for UFC Atlantic City? It does. Uh, God, it pains me to say it, but I'm going to go with uh, Reese McKee, round two, round three, plus 354 is going to be my best bet. Just because I feel like there is a realistic scenario where this could look like favorite money or look terrible, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Awesome. One or the other, one or the other, for sure. Uh, that's to win over seven units there, so that'd be big, and I think it's a it's a viable outcome as long as he does not get completely destroyed in the first uh, round there. All right, um, so there we have it. Thank you all so much for watching. Going to kick it around uh, here. We'll start with 138. Let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, 138 MMA everywhere, pretty much. Uh, on Instagram, there's a little underscore between the numbers and the letters, but otherwise, 138 MMA everywhere. Um, got some fun stuff coming up soon. We're going to do another MMA trivia night over on the channel, which I thought was a blast last time. Anybody that watched it had fun. Um, I know everybody's just here for the picks and the bets, but it was a little fun, something to add. So we're going to do some fun stuff like that soon, but we're still going to give you the picks. We're still going to give you the bets, all that as well as more. So 130 MMA. There you go, guys. Go check him out. He does great work. Johnny K as well does great work. He's been killing it. Johnny, let people know where they can find you. 
Yeah, thanks for having me on the show again. Uh, good luck to everybody in their bets as well. But you can find me at Johnny K Picks on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, me and Cody from Blood Money and MMA Bets always go uh, live shows, defend your units on Wednesday and Friday nights. So definitely check us out then as well. And I put my uh, breakdown videos out usually on Sunday, if not Sunday, Monday night. So definitely check that out as well. There we go. And last but not least, we got Luke. Luke, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, guys, you can check me out, SWR underscore betting, uh, sparringwithreality.com. That's where I put out all my bets and content and then do some additional work over at Establish the Run uh, with Brett Apley with written breakdowns over there for their DFS platform as well. So, yeah, dude, it's been a, it's been a fun show. Uh, let, let's catch some bets. Yep, looking forward to seeing how you guys do. I think there's a lot of spots sticking out for this car. Uh, do me a favor, guys. Leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. Be on the lookout for more content. I'll be trying to get my UFC Vegas 90 breakdown out on Sunday, if not, then Monday. And, yeah, guys, enjoy the fights. It should be a fun one. We'll talk to you soon, and, and see you later.